him I'm going to see Maxine. She at least understands. I hear the farming news is looking for a freelance contributor, if you're interested. Bridget, take a memo. Take six, take all you want. And next week, if you're a good girl, I might even promote you to secretary. Bills, bills. One lease, signed, sealed and delivered. Well done. You can always trust Al to do the dirty, isn't that right? <laughs> Don't tell me you're developing a conscience. She's very happy with the apartment. And so she should be. It's costing us enough. What now? You don't need to know. Did she read this? She trusts me. And speaking of which, I do hope this will mean a few favours returned from the family trust. I presume you mean financial favours. If you must put it that way. You really need to learn that you must not expect rewards for everything you do in this life. I thought the barter system was how we red ferns operated. Particularly where the family is concerned. <laughs> oh, go on. Here's where you tell me I get my reward in heaven. Maybe you will. Maybe you will get your reward in heaven. Chance would be a fine thing. Well, I wouldn't know about that. I'm not troubled here with your affairs down here. We're not worrying about what happened. How are you today, Jasmine? Top of the pops, thanks, B Day. Ah, oh, Bridget, you're here. Run your eyes over these for me, would you please? Jasmine, have you come up with a new feature to replace the knitting abattoir we lost? Yes. Shrouds. Lovely long white shrouds. Shrouds? I look at the models like ghosts. Not a spark of life in any of them. So I, I thought shrouds. Seems that, don't you think? Believe it or not, Jasmine, this is a lifestyle magazine, and these pages have to go back to the printers today, otherwise we will all be wearing long white shrouds. Got it? I'm not a miracle worker. I can't do everything. Oh, that's enough self-pity, Jasmine. You can do this blindfold. You've done it many times in the past. Now get stuck in. Magda, Gemma, so good of you to drop in. Ever tried finding a car park in this town? No excuses. Julian, you're here. Come into my office. What do you mean, car park? You haven't even got a car. <laughs> oh, this is hopeless. He's got it all wrong. Who has? The photographer. Look at this. The angles are all wrong. The colour's dreadful. Oh, looks OK to me. You just don't see, do you? No. Obviously, I don't. <laughs> I get the feeling it's going to be a very long day. Bradley. Mother? You look as though you could do with a shower and a shave and a change of clothes. You're quite right, Mother. That's exactly what I intend to do. As soon as I've spoken to Cara. She's gone. Did she say where? Matter of fact, she did. Well? Your wife's gone to visit a new friend, Maxine. Oh, good one, Jasmine. What? Well, you've got the stylist's name down as the photographer's and the photographer's down as the stylist. They will be pleased. I haven't. Oh, oh look, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to upset you. It's just my feeble attempt at humour. Take no notice. I just don't know what's happening. I can't seem to get any of it right. Don't cry. Please don't cry. These layouts are in enough mess as it is. Help. Hello. Uh, Graham Taylor, please. Graham Taylor? Is this Redfern Construction? Then I'd like to speak to Graham Taylor. What do you mean there's no one of that name there? Y yes, I will, thanks. Mm. How to Love Your Body. Yes, it's not my latest book, but it's one I thought you might enjoy. I shall. I shall. 
Well, I suppose you get much time for reading, not for leisure, anyway. Oh, I always like to have something by my bed to dip into before I go to sleep. And if it's anything like your column, I know I'm going to love it. From what I've read, your style seems to be very simple and uh, direct. Yes, well, that is my intention. Until later. Magda, can you proof? Oh, what's the matter now? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Can you proof that? And if he delivers it later again, he's fired. Do you need a hand? <laughs> you can get lost as well! <laughs> oh, look. Bookends. This is read from the younger. Oh, Magda, have you ever... I hope you don't mind. Not at all. I've always got time for a friend. Come on in. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Of course not. Can I get you anything? Tea? Oh, coffee? No, thanks. Well, how are you, Caroline? I'm fine. I took your advice. I'm back at work. Good. Believe me, this job has helped my sanity more than once. What did Brad think about you working? When we were married? Mm. <laughs> Not much, but I went ahead and did it anyway. Brad is a traditionalist as far as the women in his family are concerned. And I'm afraid he's too old to change. How is he? Oh, all right. No. The truth is, Maxine, I don't know. Oh. He won't talk to me. Oh, he's using words, but none of them make any sense. He's a man, darling. Accept it. When you two were married, what... Well, what started him wandering? From bed to bed, you mean? Mm. Nothing. Nothing? Mm-hmm. Musical beds was always part of Brad's repertoire. He wasn't going to change just because he'd married me. Brad didn't come home last night. Really? Have you seen him today? No. Caro, there's something I... What is it? There's something out here I think you ought to see. Can't it wait? No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I hope you're not wasting my time. <laughs> No. One minute she was crying merrily, and the next thing she's stretched out on the floor. Well, she certainly knows how to pick her moments. Oh, Metsy. I know, I know. It's not her fault. Her pulse is very slow. She should go to hospital. There's an ambulance on its way. Good girl. I'll go with her. What's happened? I thought you'd gone. Oh, I forgot to ask about payment. Jasmine's collapsed. You know, sometimes illness is a good thing. You what? The body knows when the mind needs a rest. Oh, shut up. When I've pointed out the facts of life, she'll see sense. There'll be no story. You're sure of that? Everything's been taken care of. Alistair's done his part. I expect he'll want something for it. Nothing. I know my own grandson, Sam. I think he views it as a sort of investment. Hmm. And about time, too. We've bailed him out often enough. He certainly is father's son. Oh, you're too harsh on both of them. On Alastair, never. On Brad, well, I don't know. I did hope he'd come to his senses, but he didn't come home last night. Olivia, we've known one another for a long time, haven't we? Hmm. Then, as an old friend, let me suggest you leave Bradley to sort out his own affairs. But I had such high hopes for this man. Leave them to it. Don't become an interfering mother-in-law. I can't help it. I can't stand by and let him throw all that away. Much as I regret it, he's all I have. Come in. Hi. Can I come in? Brad, hello there. How are you feeling this morning? Tired. It's good to see you. And it was good to see you last night. Yeah, it was good to see you too. We haven't done that for a long time. No. 
I understand Cara has been to see you. Yes, and isn't it wonderful? She doesn't regard me as an enemy anymore, just a good friend. And why shouldn't we be friends? After all, we do have you in common. And who knows you better than your wives? And where is she now? She's gone to the hospital. The what? Oh, don't worry. She's taken one of my staff there. She was very upset about last night. I made a mistake, Maxine. I should have talked to Cara, not come running to you. I intend to make this marriage work. Well, you have a funny way of going about it. That's why I've got to find out. She's probably down at the restaurant. Always the damned restaurant. That's not very charitable. Alistair's got a lot to answer for. Well, it's only natural that she and Alistair find common ground. They are, after all, both of the same generation. So that's where she is, is it? After the hospital, I believe so. Oh, Brad, do be kind to her. She's very young. And cheer up, darling. Your Caro is on her feet and getting on with life. And best of all, you and I are friends again. Quite a morning. Oh, between Jasmine and your father. It certainly has been. You will go and see her, won't you? She'd appreciate it. You'd appreciate it. Jasmine will try and strangle me with the intravenous drip. <laughs> Why don't you go home? I'd rather stay here if you don't mind. I uh, can't face your father right now. I wish they could all just leave us alone. I really don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry. Alistair. I know the miscarriage wasn't your fault. And that's all that matters. Oh, well, um, back to the salt mines. Take it easy, huh? I hope you come bearing messages of peace. Is Kara here? Oh, this is getting tedious. We've been down that route already. Don't push it, Alistair. Is my wife here or not? Even if she were here, I don't think I'd tell you. You'd probably cause another scene. I want to talk to her. Well, she's not here, so you can crawl back to where you came from. Hello, Mr. Rizzo. It's not very chatty, your dad. Maybe get out of bed on the wrong side. House flat. Great. I don't know how to thank you. I'm sure you'll think of something. <laughs> Better watch this one, Al. If she's as fiery in bed as she is in the office. Drop dead, Campbell. <laughs> oh, well, another round of drinks. Hit the table, OK? Six is pig. You're a bit sensitive. I suppose it's Jasmine. I feel kind of responsible. Nah, you're not. I feel like I deceived her. Yeah, well. Sometimes you all have to indulge in a bit of deception for the good of the cause. Nervous exhaustion, apparently. They also said she was malnourished. Oh, in this day and age. Our Jasmine is what you might call body conscious. Uh, to the point of anorexia. Oh, great! My magazine's staffed by neurotics. She's a very creative person. She's left us in the lurch. All right, all right. I will go to the hospital and talk to her. Maxine, the girl collapsed. She needs rest and quiet. Well, what do you suggest? I mean, you've seen the state of all this. The list of stockists is missing. We have an avatorial to replace. And half the transparencies for the remaining pages are unusable. How the hell did that happen? Oh, she'd hidden them away. Her assistant only just found them. I don't believe this. I have to talk to her. I can't see us getting this supplement together without Jasmine on deck. There isn't time. Then we'll have to work twice as hard, won't we? All right. I'll see if I can sweet-talk the printers into giving us more time. Read. We have an obligation to try. Here we are. Put that with your spring brides piece. What is it? Teaching your toddler language skills. Why may I ask? I hate short people. Some readers will find this fascinating, Magda. And they're welcome to it. Bye. G'day, gorgeous. 
Get out, gorgeous yourself. Oh, shut up and drive, you big butch thing. Anything you say, babe. I'm not going out with Simon you tonight, see? and that's that. Listen, after you finish work, you're coming straight home. <laughs> Just a few minutes. If I don't see him, I'll find someone else. Lesson number one, do not be too eager. Keep them hanging. Oh, like you, you mean. I saw the way you were looking at that shrink. Mr. King to you. You could hardly keep your hands off him. A little more respect for your mother, please, Chelsea. Get your penny on, fat stuff. You were due to start work 15 minutes ago. It's no wonder you can't keep in your staff. Oh. Be nice to her, darling. She's at a difficult age. Nice? Me? From all accounts, that's not possible. Tut, tut, dear, don't sulk. Oh, where's Mrs. Redfern? I thought she'd be propping up the bar with an abacus in her hand. I sent her home. Nothing serious, I hope. Oh, just Dad playing stupid macho games. I don't know what's got into her. Any fool can see she's not well. He doesn't deserve someone as good as her. My, my. If I didn't know you better, I'd say that was real emotion. Most unlike you. Hello. Hello. Had a good day? How can you walk in here and pretend nothing's happened? I haven't seen you for 36 hours. I've been looking for you all day. I couldn't find you. Well, now you've succeeded. Perhaps you'll tell me where you were last night. I needed time to think. And where did you do this thinking? Does it matter? It does to me. I went to see Maxine. Maxine? Look, there's been so much going on between you and I. I know it sounds bad, but I needed to talk to someone who knows me. We didn't sleep Don't together. Say Look, any... I spent two hours there. And I drove around for a bit and I finished up at Reed's. And that's the truth. I'm sorry you can't talk to me. I'm your wife. Why can't you talk to me? I don't know. Well, when you've worked it out, perhaps you'll let me know. Unless, of course, you'd rather discuss it with Maxine. Welcome to the little shop of horrors. See, Madame Lash is running a tight ship. Well, that's just the post-Jasmine disaster area. Come here. I always wondered why they designed this little corner of the office. And now I know. So how are things really going here? Chaotic. Honestly, you should see what I've been reduced to writing. How to indoctrinate your offspring. I mean, really. Why can't they let the little dears learn to talk in their own sweet time? People talk too much anyway. There are much better ways of communicating. Really? Such as? I've always wanted to do this, you know. On this cap. I've got a better idea. Come here. Where the hell are you going? The inner sanctum. I don't have a play with Madame Lash's articles of torture. God, you're even kinkier than I thought. <laughs> She's very ill. That's why I waited all day before I came to see her. But you're going to have to wait a little longer, Mrs. Redfern. Look, this is very important. There is a great deal at stake. I'm sorry. Money. Professional credibility. The patient's health. She's not to be disturbed. And I have a magazine to put out. I'm sorry, but you'll have to leave. Oh. And if you don't do it promptly, I'll have the orderlies evict you.
this place reeks of it. Of what? A bitch on heat for money and power. Mm. That's Maxine. Do you want to know why this magazine's going down the tubes? No, not really. Because she's had it. She's passed her time. And pretty soon, I'm going to make sure she's history. You're not really one of Maxine's greatest fans, are you? She's a gold digger. She knew what she was doing the minute she laid eyes on the Redfern family. A little Miss Nobody from nowhere with an eye to the main chance. So? I know her. I know where she comes from. When I came to Auckland, I couldn't even get in to see people like the Red Ferns. Nobody wanted to know about me. But that's all changed now. Now they're going to have to pay attention. Maxine and all the other Red Ferns scum. Now they're going to have to watch their backs. And maybe you better decide which side you're on. Yeah, it is. What's wrong? I was just wishing I was your age again, when life seems so simple. Simple? You should try living with Mum. Tried that. <laughs> Did you ever get afraid of growing up when you were my age? Well, I don't think age has got anything to do with it. I'm still afraid. Just because I'm... An a... old bloke, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean I've got it sussed. I thought adults were supposed to know what they're doing. Yeah, well, don't always. I wish you'd tell me what was wrong. I wish I could, too. It's just not that easy. It's OK. I understand. Do you? Most men are emotionally inarticulate. Wednesdays, third period, human relationship. Mr. Wyeth. What can I do for you? Nice apartment. Yes, I'm very pleased with it. Good. Look, Mr. Wyeth, I don't appear rude, but I am on my way to work. Of course. Has Alistair sorted out the lease with you? Yes. What do you want? Graham Taylor. I thought you might like to know he's left the country. Not the most stable of individuals. In fact, um, a person rather inclined to exaggeration. You know about my story. Did you really think we would not? I'm going ahead with it. You can try. I've got all the information I need. Probably you do, but in the eyes of any editor worth his salt, you've made one very bad mistake. And what's that? This apartment. I'm your new landlord, or rather Redfern Construction is. Alistair set me up, didn't he? Blood is thicker than... Um, a couple of bottles of wine or a night under duvet. So you see, no person in their right mind would touch your story. Too many unanswered questions. Most awkward. You have been bought, whether you knew it or not at the time. I'll vacate. Under the terms of the lease, that will not be possible. Next time, I suggest you read the fine print. I would have thought that was one of the first things they taught you in journalism school. Lucy, where's a copy to the cosmetics piece? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Jasmine didn't tell me. Well, how am I meant to find out? Mental telepathy. I'm sorry, Mrs. Oh, Ritter. go away and make yourself useful. At least she came up with the stockers to us. A wonderful one less piece missing in the jigsaw. You look awful. Thanks. Abusing yourself as usual, I suppose. In a manner of speaking, public relations. Oh, spare us the sordid details. Here, get hold of this. You and Panya can check these against the pages if you can bear to stoop so low. Anything, Mother Teresa. Anything at all, any please don't shout. 
A little tact might get us further. Tact? We've got a big job to do. I just think a little diplomacy might ease the way. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, as a matter of fact. Well, I've got just the job for you. You can go to the hospital and tactfully talk your way into seeing Jasmine, because I want the copy to the cosmetic piece. Hello, all. What have you got to be so damn cheerful about? Not a lot, considering I don't show my face outside these stools. Mm, with a face like that, I'm not surprised. No hey, trays, droll Magda. But in the real world, we're all in trouble. Some of the movers and shakers in my small corner are already talking about pulling out of the supplement. Someone's putting the word about. Mm. And I wonder who that could be. Something green and lemony. Something that signifies a new start. I suppose we should do some sort of spring menu. Of course we should. New beginnings, a new start. It's the perfect time. Maybe something a little Japanesey. A little Japanesey. Yeah, you know, cool and light. Really small portions. <laughs> what do you think? Well, give me a few specifics and I'll let you know. Well, I haven't actually worked out the details yet. Oh, I see. It's a hypothetical menu, is it? <laughs> Embryonic. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have all this. And I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have you here. Oh, thanks. You're a dear. Jasmine? Jasmine, can you understand what I'm saying? There are so many things missing. We need them for the next issue. For the summit? Do you, do you know, know what, what I'm talking, talking about? about? Uh, we're not getting very far, are we? Make a scene. Yes, dear. Maxine's doing her block. Oh, dear. Still a bit groggy, are we? Yes, I'm afraid she is, rather. Yes, well, she's had something to help her rest. But we still have to eat, don't we, Jasmine? Would you like to feed her? What? You can if you like. Oh, um, yes. All right. I, um, don't think you're going to get anything out of her. You're not really her mother, are you? No. Well, try and get her to eat as much as possible. Everything's settled, Olivia. You're absolutely positive. Miss Stace won't be troubling us again. I don't know, Sam. Some of these young so-called professionals, they've got no scruples at all. Times have changed since our day. There was a time when you could take people at their word. Nowadays, even a written contract has no meaning whatsoever. They change their minds as often as they change their socks. You've nothing to worry about, Olivia. Never sign a contract until you've read the fine print, Rita. Stace didn't, so she's liable for that flat until Redfern Construction uh, decides... Thank you, Rita. Perhaps you'd be good enough to get us some tea, would you? I wish you'd be more circumspect, Sam. About what? Everybody's listening these days. Oh, Come on, that. sit down. You talk about that girl as if she'd been imprisoned in that apartment. Well, in a sense, she has. But in, under the most comfortable circumstances and at a very reasonable rental. She'll soon realize which side her bread is buttered. I assure you, the company has seen the last of Gemma Stace. Hello, is that Redfern Construction? I'd like to speak to Graham Taylor, please. Graham Taylor. Look, don't mess me around. No. No, I don't want to speak to Sam Wyeth. Thanks. There you go. Magda, that is very good. Mm. And you thought I was only a talented writer. Ah. Panya, get the courage to take that to the printers. Tell them the rest will come in through the night. Through the night? You heard? And Panya, do a ring round and get everyone in. Nobody's going to leave until we're finished. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but by heaven, we'll get this supplement out, even if it kills us. Want a drink? No, thanks. Go on. Crack open a bowl of moe, it is, darling. You've already had quite a lot tonight. And I'll have some more. Don't shake your head at me. I can decide. I can decide what's best for me. You're very unhappy, aren't you? I'm not unhappy. Why should I be unhappy? I'm free, more or less. I resign myself to the fact that I can't have children. Life without children can be very uncomplicated. I can please myself. And Dad? Your father. He taught me everything I know.
Chelsea, what are you doing here? I'm staying the night. Are you? Mum rang. Some panic at the office. She told me to come and stay. Oh. Where's Caro? Uh, oh, uh, she's at some sort of meeting or something. Is everything all right between you two? We're just going through a bit of a bad patch, that's all. Everything will be all right, you'll see. <laughs> hey. I'm the adult. Leave the worrying to me. Like a hot chocolate? Cheese on toast? OK. Take care, Dad. There. What do you reckon? Seems all right. Surprisingly enough, this is rather fun. I can't see what Jasmine gets in such a fuss about. It beats spring brides, I suppose. Oh, you're not wrong there. Mind you, I shan't be complaining when we've finished. Go home, kid. Hey? Oh, no, no, I'm OK. I was just, um, thinking. Well, don't. Thinking is the root of all evil. Oh, yes, they will be pleased. Something wrong, Campbell? Well, this clothing company. Worldwide, they spend millions on advertising, and they'll be quite keen, should they like the spread, to throw some of that our way. So? They're not going to give us one red cent when they see something so riddled with errors as this. It looks as if it's been put together by an incompetent and run through a trade union gestetner. So what are you suggesting, Campbell? We all pack up and go home. If stain means putting out substandard garbage like this, yeah, we should flag it away. Well, why don't you just do that, Campbell? You've done nothing but whinge and moan all night. So why don't you do us all a favour and shove off? For you, Magda, anything. Is it? Cheers. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. I haven't felt this relaxed in ages. That's champagne for you. No, it's sitting here talking to you. Pleased to be of service. You need it cheering up. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Besides, we couldn't have such a sour face in the diner. <laughs> Bad for business. I better go home. I'll catch a cab. Good day, mate. Hello, Campbell. Still open? Well, as a matter Great. of fact... Large vodka, thanks. I deserve it. Working for your mother's magazine is enough to drive any man to drink. Night, Alistair. I'll see you tomorrow. You'll take care now, you hear? I'll do my best. Bye. Bye. Your old man's a lucky sod. She's a very tasty piece. Just shut your face, Campbell. My apologies, old son. Didn't realize you were so titchy. Still, I may have the cure for that. Little toot for the snoot. On me. Oh, what the hell. At least it's something for nothing. Have you got time to fix it? I don't know. The whole page will have to be redone. <sighs> Damn it. Are we doing the right thing? I mean, this is another page back to the printers, and they're at our throats as it is. I'll give them a ring, see if we can get more time. Sure, but that pushes our deadline back even further. We lose every way. It's not just this page on your mind, is it? Oh, Bridget. Everyone's working so hard to put this thing together, but there just isn't enough time to do it properly. Maybe Campbell was right. Maybe we are looking to put out something that isn't up to scratch. Me? Agree with Campbell? <laughs> Heaven forbid. Bridget, don't tell anyone.
over is everyone else. Oh, I don't know. They're around somewhere. I think Pania was having some crisis with the coffee machine. Long night. Oh, well. I was only going to wash my hair. No date with Rex? Would it matter if I had? Not really. Who you choose to keep company with is your business. Good. Cool. It's just that Rex is rather keen on seeing Maxine fail. So I've noticed. And I wouldn't want anyone from the office to help him, however unwittingly. Message received and understood. We had a few ropey moments, but I think we're going to be OK. We'll see. Oh, he's just come into the office. Sorry to have woken you. Bye. Your wife. Oh. You're up early. Yes. I've just been to the printers. And? They're pulling the plug. No more time? Nope. Not for love nor money. Do you want to know why? I suppose so. You're going to love this. Rex Thorne, Electra's running a supplement this month, too. <sighs> the swine. Yes, he's paid over the odds and booked everything solid. Hell of a mess. You're telling me. Looks like the end of the line, doesn't it? Well, I suppose it was for the best. Some of it was looking a bit dodgy. Yes. At least we tried. Oh, we certainly did. I better go and call it a night. We'll get Rex Thorne tomorrow. That's my girl. Um, everyone. I'd uh, like to thank you for everything you've done tonight. We gave it our best shot. But you can all go home now. The supplement's been cancelled. This way? What do you reckon? Oh, come on, kid. Give us a smile. What do you think you're doing here? I've got a key. Oh, of course. I forgot. You're practically my landlord. Practically? No hard feelings, eh? No hard feelings. You conned me. You made an idiot out of me for the sake of your stupid family. I've got plenty of hard feelings. Pity? I think you know quite well. I don't like being compromised, Alistair, especially not by... Oh, you. come on, Gemma. Not on the Green Two Shoes Act. You're not kidding anybody. What are you talking about? There's nothing wrong with ambition. And there's nothing wrong with accepting favours. But if you get caught doing it, don't play the innocent. You set me up! I didn't know the first thing about any of this kind of stuff. You didn't want to know. I bet you didn't even ask yourself how come this place is so cheap. If you did, you might have had to come up with a few answers. Just get out of here, you scumbag. You should be very grateful to my family. You've done very well out of get us. Get out! Sure thing. But, uh, just one word of advice. Gemma. Ditch the small town morality. This is Auckland. Copy later. Sleep, so I don't see why anybody else should. You might as well come in. Everyone else has. Well, that's what happens when you move into an upmarket apartment like this. Suddenly you end up with more friends than you can shake a stick at. Friends? That's the last thing I need at the moment. What do you got on today? 
The usual stuff. Maths, history. Nothing much. What have you got on today? Usual stuff. Paperwork, meetings. You've always been dead hopeless at conversation first thing in the morning. I can't pull the wool over your eyes any longer, can I? You never could, Dad. Ah, food! Hmm. Would you like some breakfast, Maxine? Don't be cheeky, Brad. Mm. I've been working all night and I am starved. You ready to go, darling? Yep. I'll say goodbye to Caro. Hurry up! I want to hit the sack. Morning, darling. So what's the problem? Scruples. I don't know. It just seems a bit dishonest, I suppose. I don't see any laws being broken. Anyway, you said so yourself, that the story was a bit touch and go. So what are you got to lose? I suppose you're right. There's no supposing about it. He may be a real prat, but Alistair Redfern's right this time, darling. There's nothing wrong with ambition. That's not what they taught us in Sunday school. You've been in this city three minutes and already you've got all this. They don't teach you how to do that in Sunday school either. <laughs> and if you've got all this now, just imagine what you could have in 12 months' time. Think on that one for a while. You'll get over it. You always have in the past. <laughs> If Rex Thorne walked in through that door, I would throttle him with my bare hands. That's the spirit. Oh, this time I mean it. It's cost me a lot. Goodwill and more than that, professional credibility, and I won't have it. You go for the jugular. I always do. And I always get what I want. Thanks for breakfast. Oh, my pleasure. Nice place you got here, if you know what I mean. and mirror glass, the city's on the main. The devil takes the hindmost and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. If you swallow a lie, I want the ice cream on the cake. 